Hey, what's up? What's up? It's your girl, Neek, and you're tuned in to Neek at Night. And I will be giving you guys exclusive coverage of the Nature Boy trial. Now, if you did not see my previous live video, I can no longer stream it live per the judge's orders. Now, I um, will be giving you guys the exclusive coverage here. You will see it exclusively here on NeekAtNight.com. And not Nika and I.com, Nika and I, okay? Nika and I.com sells my products that you could buy. You're gonna see it exclusively on Nika at Night YouTube channel. Now, I am going to be playing it. The next witness that is up is the victim's baby daddy. Now, if you know who the, the victim's baby daddy is, that is the next witness that comes up in the case. Now, the court's order is that in the coverage of the trial, we cannot publish the name of the victim. I previously went live and I was live yesterday and the victim's name was mentioned several times. The court requested that I take it down, edit her name out. So that's what I will be doing separately. A lot of people were streaming my video and those videos I am asking nicely for you to take them down because it has been requested from the judge. Now, I will send in my request from the court to YouTube if you do not take it down and we'll be taking strike notices, strike takedown notices, all right? Um, and that's just that on that. Stay mad, get mad, do things the proper way, and that's just how it goes. I'm following the court orders. So with that being said, let's get into the next testimony. Um, and just to err on the side of caution, anybody who is on the prosecution's list, I'm just kind of going to, even though they told me it was solely to the, the victim as far as they knew, I'm just going to be cautious and try to mute out when they say their names, when they say certain names from, you know, because they're considered like, victims of this circumstance so that's what i'm gonna do if you know who it is you know who it is and that's just that on that everybody who has been watching the case and even the ones who are trying to just now come in and start covering him um you know all of us know the names of the certain individuals so you know that's just that on that so let's get into this gig and hopefully you enjoy the coverage if you want to support all of the work that i'm doing to cover this case Definitely can support me via Super Chat. If you are watching this after it is no longer live, you can also do a super sticker in the comments. Or you can, you know, donate via Cash App or support it on my website. With that being said, let's get into the testimony. <laughs> Look at her face. You swear or affirm the testimony to the court to be the truth, the whole truth, none of the truth, so help you God? Yes. Lord, your hand. State, state your name for the court. Wait, Geo Bishop? Very well. Okay. When did you first uh, learn of him? Oh, man. Uh, during my, my spiritual journey, um, very early on, and I had seen his videos after looking at Dr. Sebi. And um, he was talking about Dr. Sebi. Um, and Maybe then. Just lean forward a little bit so we can oh, yeah. close the microphone, please. Thank Thank you. Much better. Okay. Thank you. So you said Dr. Sebi? Is that right? Dr. Sebi. I Sebi. Hope it's Sebi. Dr. Sebi. <laughs> um, I was getting deep into veganism and being organic, and his video popped up where he was talking about that. I trailed back into other videos and found him talking about things I talk about no one else does. Okay. And that was Mr. Bishop that was talking about those things? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm uh, when you say a while ago, we're we talking a couple years, five years, if you just had to estimate about how long ago you first learned of him? Five and a half years. Okay. And was, did that start just online? Yes. At some point, did you begin communicating with Mr. Bishop? Actually, yes. I ended up playing chess with him online uh, while I was watching his videos. And um, he didn't know it was me. But after that, not much personal. No. Okay. At some point, well, I guess you said you were on this journey. 
What else was going on in your life at that point when you started finding the videos online? Well, um, I was already, it was my birthday, uh, 23, and I remember being very irritated with the fact that the world doesn't acknowledge nature in a certain way. And um, I was going through certain things with my family. Uh, I haven't lived with my father since ever, but I used to spend weekends with him and things like that. No father figures around me. And I was always looking for that, always. Uh, brothers, friends, whatever. And, um, you know, I went to this isolation phase. And I was sleeping on the floor in my room. Um, didn't even want to use a bed. We're going really deep into depression. It's just from learning more and more. And the more I learned, the sadder I got. I didn't know there was another way to live. I never thought of leaving the country. Never imagined that you could live a nice life in Mexico. You know, so seeing that was like a huge relief. When I saw his videos with him standing on the mountains, no clothes, speaking the knowledge that I taught. And I felt free. I felt like uh, something, like the ceiling was removed and I could breathe. And I was like, I can live my, I can keep living my life happily. I can do something. And is that what was appealing about the life that Mr. Bishop offered? 100%. When did you leave home to go stay with him? Well, I actually went and started my own tribe which was a video he made where he recommended we do that. I did, uh, naturally, actually didn't even plan it. Um, I ended up going into Mexico, I'm from San Diego, California. We just crossed right through the border into Mexico, me and a couple friends, and we were just gonna do our own thing. Happy, super happy. He ended up, somebody ended up calling me him while we were in the car, and he ended up asking what we had to offer he ended up asking that my friends, they offered money and different things. I'm like, I got my music, I got my computer, I can make everyone an album. And he's like, we want him, we need, that's what we need. Yeah, you're, you're for sure, you can come. And I was like, that's the commander in chief of the earth plane. I, I would love to go, I would be honored. Where were they located at this point? They were actually in Palenque, Mexico. I have no idea though, I was, I thought they were in Belize or, I didn't know. Okay. And so did you at that point travel to Palenque? Yes. So I went from Tijuana and um, once we spoke with him, he had us go to various locations and then we finally went to Palenque and then I met, he sent people to pick me and my friend uh, Jacob up. Okay. And where were they living or staying at this point? Um, there was a, it's a really nice, I think, couple acre property in Palenque, Mexico, top of the mountain. Was it like a house? Uh, were they were they in tents? Like, what was the living situation? It was a decent sized house okay. with a lot of acres of land. I believe, I think five. I could be wrong, but it was a lot of a lot of acres of land, mango trees, fruit trees. We set up tents wherever. And. When you arrived, did you have personal belongings like passport, currency, things of that nature with you? Yes. And, uh, what happened to those items? Um, I was going to leave them behind. I brought them with me and I just stored them in my backpack in the attic. And after a couple months, it actually was all ruined from mold and things. But. Okay. And the name, did you go by a different name in the group? Um, it was the same. When you first met up with the group, how would you describe your relationship with Mr. Bishop? Uh, I think I was frustrated with the group in, in general at first. They weren't applying the knowledge that we were there apparently for. It's like they didn't know. It's like they were students. And I thought I was going to be around, around a bunch of masters. Some of the guys were having a meeting and they were going to leave. I expressed my frustration of 
them not applying the same music that they rap, the same knowledge they rap about in their music. And I'm like, this is crazy. I thought you guys were them. And Alicio told me, he said, you're right. Don't worry, you are right. But they don't respect you yet. Be quiet and let me handle this. And I just sat there frustrated initially. I thought we had a good relationship at first, and I believe later on that night, he ended up going around calling me a vampire and saying I was just sucking up the energy around and really negative, started telling people to stop talking to me, started telling people to stop engaging with me. Uh, we were at dinner, I remember, we were at dinner at Jay's, Cafe J in Palenque, Mexico, and I was getting along very well with everyone. He did not like that. What were the sleeping arrangements in the group? The men were separated from the women, unless they were paired together, which was off and on. The sleeping arrangements were either on the floor in the house together as a group, if we're sleeping inside. If we sleep outside, uh, we all had our own um, cabela tents, very large tents, and we can share them with four to eight people sometimes. And Or we had our own personal tents. Okay. And who would decide, like, if y'all are sleeping in the house or in the tent that night? Like, where did that come from? The group. Okay. We would collectively agree on what we wanted to do for the night sometimes. Okay. What about other rules within the group? When you got there, did you learn rules? To a degree. We were told that we would be following the laws of my out, which was not done. And we were also told that uh, we were going to be driven by something called Morals Over Desires, or MODs, which uh, Alivio put together. And this was to keep us from doing things in our desires, if you will, or making sure that we made sacred movements with everything that we did. So where did the rules within the group come from? Well, there were rules. They just weren't ever followed. Um, he put them together, as far as I'm concerned, and... As we went throughout the years, we were always changing and manipulating these rules and when and where to use them, things like that. And who was changing the rules? Aaliyah. Okay. Were there rules related to romantic relationships? Yes, and that was the most fickle rule. How so? It only applied when either he was quote unquote single or the woman he wanted wouldn't be with him. Or when he felt like he needed to do a media stunt was another reason um, he would say he wanted all the women and uh, things like that. It was really always very superficial why he chose to intervene. And were folks within the group able to say no to Mr. Bishop? The option was to leave or agree. What would happen if someone upset or angered Mr. Bishop? Mm, I would say that emotional abuse would begin. This is where people would be isolated, uh, put in a corner, or uh, for those who are familiar with college, like a hazing type of thing, we treat people a certain way if they are not in agreement with him. Um, or one of the things that would happen is we would call them a cancer cell, and we would treat them like uh, they're a cancer cell, like in the body, and you have to, they have to kill the cancer cells. But we're not going to kill them, we're just going to surround them. And this was the concept. Okay. What did members of the group call Mr. Bishop? Like, how was he referred to? It changed from, from my experience, Commander-in-Chief, and then it went to... Um, chief it went to uh, let me see there was Nature Boy I never really knew him. I never got to meet him when he went by Nature Boy there was uh, Three Guy which is the most fraudulent one um, let me <laughs> see I think the list goes on he used to change his name really often to similar things so just small alterations how did he refer to the world outside of the group for those familiar with the Bible or history, Babylon is what you would call it. And would he allow folks within the group to maintain communication with their friends and family outside of the group? 
Yes. However, it was frowned upon. How so? It was as if you were, you didn't really let go of your Babylon self or your Babylon family as it was um, regarded as. So if you did reach out and it wasn't to convince them to support us for money, there's no reason to be talking to them. When people left the group, how did Mr. Bishop respond? He didn't care. I mean, initially, when they try to leave, it's um, hell on wheels. Once they finally get to leave, he does not care. Can you describe whether there was like an us against them ethos within the group? Yes, there was a us against, a us against them ethos where any inward segregation took place. So we it was men or women, that would be a type of war. A team and B team would be these guys do the dirty work, we do all the technical stuff and we get more rewards than them. That always played a part, at least I've seen it in how they felt, how the guys would feel. Um, and any time, anyone would, agree, would disagree with him. Many times I had to sit up for hours fighting for what was true, but everyone was, quote unquote, being their yes man, just so they can go to sleep or just so they can leave. Did you ever. So far, good testimony. Violence be used within the group? Often. Very often. What was that violence used to accomplish? Dominance. By who? Uh, Alivio. Even if it was done from other people, it was usually under an order. Very militant, so things would be done under orders. Good the job, Stolai. Or did the group maintain a robust online presence while you were there? Oh yes. And were there, I guess, was anything posted on any of the defendants' social media without his causing that to happen? No. He actually had to um, verify most all posts. And even if we made our own content, you'd have to show it to him initially to get it approved. After a while, we kind of got in the groove of the standard, and we can just make our own content. And by, by 2022, about, if you had to estimate about how many social media followers did Mr. Bishop have? Uh, Instagram read about 30,000. However, it was way more than that, uh, all collectively on the internet. And during your time in the group, did you participate in social media videos? Often, yes. Did those, uh, during the course of those videos, were you saying positive things about Mr. Bishop and the group? Always, yeah. Did your comments in those videos accurately reflect the reality of what was happening? No, because we only spoke about knowledge. We didn't really speak about what went on in the home front. That would turn people away. Were you with the group on March 24th of 2022? I believe so, yes. The night you left? Yes. Okay. Um, do you remember what was happening that day? Yes. What was going on? The relevant um, part, I was actually setting up an interview with Tasha K this day at the house. Who's just so many, who's Tasha K? She's um, a YouTuber. Okay, who's so you're... known for many things, I'm sure. Okay, so I don't know her details, but I met with her for lunch. We scheduled a interview at the house this day. Um, excuse me, not this. Yeah, that's when I scheduled it. And that night, I remember. Um, excuse me, I think I confused the dates a little bit, but I think that night with. The we, she was, yet again, fighting to be in a relationship with me. Um, usually the cause of most issues with me was she wanted to be with me. Over and over, all the time. She's always telling it to him. And my 
my ex was behind me. Uh, her name, you guys know her as Zoga, or Jan Marie. You guys know her as Zoga. He knows she's my ex, and he knows that she wants to be with me. I mean, we've been with both of them at the same time before. And the thing is, when he likes to put us on blast, we use astrology to really point out flaws or things, psychological issues people may have. And I share certain aspects in astrology that were highlighted during this meeting. We were being called demons. We were being told that we were operating in our lower selves. Okay, so hold on. I, I think I'm lost. So this meeting is taking place that mm -hmm. night? That night. No. Okay. All right. And so who all is present for the meeting? The whole group. Okay. And you said that you're being told this. Who's, t who's saying these things about you? And so Eligio has a table just like this. And he has a TV. And he has our chart pulled up on the TV. Everybody's sitting in various areas, either on their knees, you want to be on their knees often, or you want to be sitting in the chairs, however it works. Okay. We're all in the same room. Okay. So as that's going on, what happens next? So um, he starts to pull up these aspects, talking about uh, we have this same demon, quote unquote. And he continues to fight for what she wants. And Eligio starts um, antagonizing her. Can't tell you verbatim what he was saying. It you got to a point to can't because you don't remember or something else? I don't remember. Okay, fair enough. All right, go ahead. And um, he ended up having Zelda slapping her a couple of times. I remember, he said that, I do remember. He said, what was that face? I saw that face. What was that face you just made? I remember that. And I was like, what face? What? I'm just here. She was like, obviously was scared to be punished immediately. He then had my ex, Zelda, start slapping her. She slapped her a couple times uh, based off of how she responded. Shortly after this, um, we continued the meeting hours. It's just, just a bunch of redundant things. The night that meeting's over, finally submits, which is usually what happens. She submits to whatever the will is of the collective to proceed. They end up having their night. She ends up saying, well, I'm just going to leave. She calls her Uber, has everything there. We're not stopping her. We don't really care. She's leaving, you know? And the girls call her back upstairs as she's leaving. And this is when we, we don't necessarily know all the details. So when, no, no let me just, so we're clear. So when, when they went back upstairs, do you remember who called her inside? Malia. Okay. So Malia calls her inside. Malia said, God's calling you. Okay. So after Malia said that, what did you see do? She went upstairs. Okay. And we I thought she was going to leave again, but she just went upstairs and never came back down. Okay. And where were you at this point? I was in the same space we were having the meeting. Very close to that is a little room where I have a little office where I do most of my technical work. Okay. I just went there. And so you were... Okay. Were you paying attention to what was going on upstairs? No, the men usually separate and let the lead he'll handle whatever he wants to do with the women. And the men usually we work together and manage each other. What else was going on in the house at this point? Nothing. Cleaning. Okay. Just cleaning and doing the mundane things, seeing what money can be made, keeping the social media going as well. Okay. Okay. Um, You ever see J again after that? Yes. Well, did you ever see J again within the group after that? Within the group, no. Okay. That was her last time with that group. All right. How long did you remain in the group? About uh, a week after. Uh, I remember shortly after she left, we had got a warrant. And I was showing the warrant, and it wasn't taken very serious. Um, I remember saving it in my desk because I knew it was serious, the warning. And about a little bit later, the police came and arrested pretty much everybody um, off of footage.
for okay. speak. And and so after that event, did you remain loyal to the group, or did you? What did you do? When we initially uh, were arrested, he just I just stayed there. Tried. He never came back. Okay. From being arrested, I stayed with the group, and I continued to help mitigate whatever needed to be done to sustain everyone, as that was my role. At some point, though, did you meet again? Yes. Okay. And did the two of you all engage in a relationship? When I first met with her, no. We actually stayed far apart because of the case. Um, however, she, when I left, a um, couple men left with me, actually supported me in the leaving, and she ended up paying for my ticket at this place called Jeju to spa. It was a place where I could just go and stay 24 hours, sleep and all that. And she paid for that, and she helped me uh, with a number of things initially when I left. Okay. When was the last time that you talked to her? Talked to her? That um, you have seen her in person? Um, let me see. When I went to see my daughter with her, which was... I don't recall the date, maybe about two, three months ago. Okay. So that's what I was trying to get at. The two of y'all have a child together, right? Yes. And that happened, daughter. did that happen after you left the group? Yes. Okay. Um, but are y'all currently in a relationship? It's complicated. Do y'all currently <laughs> reside in the same home? No. Okay. If I could have just a second, Your Honor. Okay. <laughs> it's complicated. We point. know, we know, we know. All right, good morning, sir. I'm great. All right, awesome. My name is Robert Book. I represent Mr. Bishop. Just a few questions for you. All right, so you indicated you know him very well. You were in San Diego. You went over into Mexico. And what year was that that you, you did that? All right, so I'm going to pause that right there. Um, this will be its own video, the prosecution talking to um, the witness and um, the cross will be its own video or I might put it together. I really don't know. But right now I'm going to pause it. And if you guys like the coverage so far, let me know down below. What do you think about his testimony? So far, he's given good testimony. I know that the defense is his job is to basically discredit him and make him look like he is not telling the truth my guess is that the prosecution i mean the defense will probably make it seem as though they plotted this if that if i was the defense that's kind of what i would do but i haven't got that far i haven't seen what the defense does so i'm interested to see how that goes stay tuned for part two of his testimony with cross I'll probably do it all together, cross and rebuttal on the next one. But y'all let me know what y'all think so far. Um, I want to end it right here so I can edit out. It's about it's about 10 minutes that they, they mentioned the victim's name. So I want to just stop it right here. Go edit out that 10 minutes. Put this up for you guys. Come back. Watch this part of it and then post that. So... We're going to I'm going to get y'all the coverage, but bear with me. I have to follow the court's order. I don't mind anybody reacting to my videos. Um, this is a, a public trial and um, this is a case that we've all been waiting for. A lot of people who have been covering this case. I do not mind if people react to my video. The only thing that I will say is if you reacted to my coverage of the first day of trial where I was not where I did not redact the victim's name and you do not take it down I will strike you if you react to this video but you have that video up I will strike every video that you post okay all I'm asking for anybody who uses my coverage is to simply in plain Take down the video from yesterday. We got so many videos going forward that you're going to be able to do your commentary. I do mine. Everybody could Everybody could do their job. I don't want to, you know, infringe on that. I know how it is to, you know, be a YouTuber, be grinding, 
or whatever. It is what it is. Respect my wishes because I have to follow the court order. If you do not respect my wishes, I will enforce the court order and I will give out strikes. I don't like to give out strikes to people. I know how it is to be building up a channel. I know how it is to be grinding and all of those things. When you get a strike, it's not really good for your channel. So I'm asking very nicely, take down the coverage from yesterday. Going forward, you can react to anything that I post going forward That because I'm going to make sure to redact those things. I'm going to make sure to put everything in accordance with the court order. And once I do that, anybody could react to it. I really don't, I really don't care. Only caveat is take down yesterday's stream. If you don't, if you react to all my coverage going forward and you leave up that video, I will strike that video. I will strike the next video. I will strike that. Uh, so it's a simple ask. Take down the coverage from yesterday and we can proceed going forward and have it that way. If you guys want to support the work that I'm doing, y'all know y'all can always visit my website, www.neekatnight.com. I have a very, 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 very good blowout sale going on. Everything must go. If you guys want to submit to the cash app y'all know it's neek at night 12 but y'all it's copycats and fakes that are try to hype jack you know my um cash app and try to make variations and everything like that make sure that is it is exactly what's on the screen if you are going to donate to the channel thank you guys so much and stay tuned for part two